My next topic is about an aircraft being built called the Radia Windrunner, It'll be the world's largest cargo plane. Now, what's not specified in the article is if it was bigger than the Mirya, which was the Antonov 225 that was designed to haul the Soviet space shuttle, which was the largest cargo plane in the world until the Russian invasion of Ukraine ended up destroying it because it was based out of a Ukrainian airfield. So it was owned by a Ukrainian company. So there was the Antonov 225. There's still four or five Antonov 124s flying around. And the 124 is about 20% larger than a C-5 Galaxy that our military uses to haul around equipment. Those things are massive. You actually have to, if you go into, well, I haven't ever been in one of the Antonovs. You go into the C-5, you have to take a ladder up to the cockpit. Oh, they're crazy. Well, you drive tanks on them. Right. I, yeah, they can haul a couple of, I think they can haul two Abrams tanks. You know, it's crazy to think you've got a 120 tons just in those two tanks, how much power you could get in there. Bill was telling me he wanted to get a, a Rivian R2 and he was trying to figure out how to get it back. And I said, well, you could get a Chinook and you could strap it to a Chinook and you could just fly it all the way back. Well, that would just change the carbon footprint of that uh, Rivian by slightly. You'd have, you'd have to catch up. You have to catch up. Yeah. He'd really have to get a million miles out of the Rivian to catch up to from the Chinook trip. And it's for hauling wind turbine blades, it's actually kind of interesting because that's that's the limitation today for land based turbines is you have to haul the blades over land and at a certain distance you can't make turns. Yes. Um, it's it's too big because it's you can't have, you know, a joint access or anything. It has to be one solid and it's really limited the size of where we are now offshore where you can you can haul it on a, a cargo ship yeah you can go a lot bigger but overland that's what we're stuck with so the idea that they're going to put this so we can build giant Alcan wind turbines somewhere that I'm amazed when I see one of those trucks go by with a wind turbine blade on it and you've got the tractor trailer you've got the little small trailer with the front end is on it and then the whole blade just stretches for like. 50 yards, 100 yards. I think it's 50 yards. I'm not sure exactly how big those ones are. And then it has another trailer at the back that the rear is sitting on and seeing it try to be straight the whole way through going down the road. And I'm just like, well, thank God they don't have to make any turns because that would just be um, nuts. I, I will tell you, it's, I, I don't think you would find a developer that would ever admit this, but there have been certain projects where you get down to it and the final logistical piece of how the heck are we going to get this here? And, and you have a tiny little limitation and a road path and the project changes drastically because it's, we wanted to haul it and we were ready to go. It's like, uh, we can't, we can't get clearance on this road, um, to, to make the sharp turn or to go down the hill or whatever we needed to get there. And it, it, it kind of blows up real quick. So this Radia Windrunner, will have a cargo volume 10 times greater than a 747. That, that just kind of puts it in perspective. And it can hold a nearly 350-foot wind turbine blade. That, that's nuts. That would mean that if you had one up, one down, that means you have a 700-plus foot to the top. That just, just seems astounding. Wind farms are typically built in remote locations. The plane will be capable of landing on short, unpaved airstrips. I don't know. I guess it's going to have to be really ruggedized. The engineers are following the mantra of do nothing new. The plane is built using existing technologies to ease the engineering and subsequent certification process. But Radia will be an energy company building clean energy projects. Its fleet of cargo planes will simply give it a strategic advantage. Think of us as an energy company with a unique way to supersize turbines. That's an uh, interesting transport thought. I've had some discussions about doing solar farms in some African countries. And I am, you know, sometimes kind of curious how, you know, getting all the correct infrastructure, all of that down into some of those projects, how that may play out. And these guys are going to fly these then. I mean, that's, you know, I guess that's the only... Uh, in a real way to go. Hi, I'm David with EB World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.